Um, all right, so I'm going to talk about a new patterns and practices uh, sample that we have called Open in Excel. Just a real quick background of what this scenario is about is um, if you have a SaaS web application uh, where folks you know, are working with data on your website, uh, there's often a point where they'll want to take that data into Excel to continue to work on it in some way, you know, maybe doing additional analysis um, or creating charts. And uh, you know, the way this would work in the past is uh, you'd let them export a CSV file. Traditionally, this is how it would work. You know, you create a CSV file, user then has to go import that into Excel. And then if they want to remain connected to your services, like say you have an Office add-in, they have to go find that Office add-in in the store or through central deployment and get it set up. So there's a number of steps for them to go through. And the idea of this scenario is like, hey, let's simplify that so it's as close to one click as possible where someone can just hey, say, hey, take my data, open in Excel, your Office add-in is already there. And as we'll see, this goes through the steps of using uh, Office Open XML to embed your add-in uh, and, and create the file. And then using Microsoft Graph, you can upload the file to OneDrive. This stereo was actually demoed a year ago uh, in September of last year by Jake Armstrong at Venna Corporation. They've actually implemented in this office add-in very successfully, uh, and that was a great demo we showed. And so basically this pattern is uh, uh, taking that same approach and uh, showing you how to do it. Um, so let me get over to some demo stuff. Uh, let's start with, um, okay, so here's the article. Uh, for open in Excel. And what this does is it uses uh, an existing uh, sample on GitHub called the Office OOXML Embed Add-in. So this has actually been out there for a couple of years now, I think, uh, or I guess three years according to the history here. Uh, and what this does is it allows you to take an existing file and insert the script lab add-in into it. And uh, so basically what we did is we took this approach and showed you how you could extend this to uh, you know, make a more end-to-end -end kind of scenario. So the way the sample works is, um, let me go ahead and run it. Oh, sorry, I'm like, there we go. So this is the sample. It's an ASP.NET web application. I'm gonna go ahead and run it and you can see what the web page looks like. And basically, it just has steps one, two, and three. We're going to go find uh, a file and embed script lab into it, and then we're going to download it back, and then we'll see what that looks like. So the first step here is I want to go choose which file I want. I already have this Contoso workbook spreadsheet that I'll use and open that. Then I'm going to click on this upload button, which is going to read that spreadsheet into memory. So now it's stored in memory in the web application. And the next step is I'm going to embed script lab into that file. There's an option here to specify which code snippet you want to see in there. I'll just use the default one, so I'll just do it this way. And then the final step is to click uh, download, to download that file, and you'll see here it's downloading. And this is uh, the interesting part. When I open this, you're going to see Excel open up, and then you'll see that Script Lab is already in there, and it opens up the task pane for Script Lab as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, then you can imagine, you know, you like you could do this with your own Office add-in. You could modify this code to instead open up, open up your Office add-in. You could put uh, whatever data, you know, the user had selected over here in the spreadsheet. You know, there's additional parts you can do. Now, just to show how this works, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I think the easiest way to show what's going on here is to go to that to downloads folder where it created the new spreadsheet instance. And as you probably know, these are always zip files. So if you just rename a spreadsheet to a zip, then it becomes a compressed uh, file and you can go into it and see the entire open XML structure of it. The important parts of this are if you go down to this Excel folder inside the file and you look at the web extensions, there's these two files here, task panes, XML, web extension, XML. So the way you insert your Office add-in is you basically create this XML. Uh, let me open this up and show you what it looks like. And you can see uh, a lot of this is 
pretty boilerplate. Like it just never changes from one instance to the next. The, the key parts to understand are like you want to put in your, uh, in this case, like the store ID of of where your the, that identifies it in the your app set and in the store, and your store type. Um, you can do this with uh, the store or essentially deployed add-ins. Um, then you want to pass some properties. This part's important here. You want to have this office .auto show task pane with document set to true. That's what causes the task pane to open. And then this is a custom property here just for uh, script lab that says, hey, here's the snippet to import and we pass it that this is that default snippet ID. So you can put whatever custom properties you need for your office add-in into this basically what's a property bag. There's also the task panes XML. Uh, and this is pretty much the, the same every time. It just specifies, hey, I have a task pane, here's how it's docking, here's my visibility and so on. So how does this part get created? Uh, this is where OpenXML comes into play. And if I go back to the code, I have opened up in the ASP.NET project this OOXML helper.cs file. And in here, there's helper functions such as validating the Office file, uh, which basically you use the OpenXML to open the file. And if it opens, it's valid. <laughs> if there's an exception, it's not valid. That's pretty simple how that works. Now to actually embed the um, office add-in that happens here, this create web ex task panes part, and it's going to call two other functions. One which creates the web extension XML that you saw, and then this generate part content generates that task panes XML. So that's kind of the two key pieces there. So I just like to explain this by saying, like basically all this code here is creating that file you just saw. That's all this is doing. So we could see here's that the my store ID store type and so on, all, all these values. So if you're using your own Office add-in, this is where you'd want to make your change to use your particular ID. Um, here's where you make sure your auto show task pane with document set to true. If you have custom properties you want to add, here's where you do that. You throw them into this property bag, anything you need. And that's pretty much it. And then this part for the task pane, this is always the same. This doesn't change. So let's see, that's pretty much how that works. Let me go back over to the article. So this is basically a part one of this sample. Uh, we're going to do a part two that's more end to end because as you can see, right, basically what we're doing is saying, okay, here's this sample you can start with, and then you'll want to do some additional things to it. For example, uh, you should use the Fluent UI. And if you go look at Fluent UI, I'll, I'll put all these links out later, by the way. Um, you can get access to icons that you can use to represent opening up various documents. So I use the Excel icon in this sample. Then you'll want to upload to OneDrive. If your users are using OneDrive, it's uh, more convenient if you can just integrate that right into OneDrive for them. So there's some steps here to create a Microsoft Graph project that shows you the code for uploading to OneDrive uh, that you can add into your solution. Also, because this this sample uses an existing spreadsheet, you'll probably want to create a brand new spreadsheet. And so there are some links here, and I, I realize this morning like this link's broken, so I'll go back and fix this. But there's additional articles that show, hey, here's how you create a spreadsheet document using OpenXML. And then if you want to read the custom properties, if you're wondering how does my office add in, read those properties out of that property bag, there's an article on that, which I will fix that link as well. By the way, the links are at the very bottom of the page. They work. You can use them down at the bottom. Uh, you'll probably want to initialize your document with data. There's a couple approaches for doing that. Uh, you could use the OpenOffice XML SDK to write that data into the document, or you could just pass a query in the property bag to your Office add-in so that when the add-in opens, it just runs the query against the back-end database, and then it just inserts data into the spreadsheet. Kind of depends on which approach you want to take there. Uh, one of the things, though, that you're gonna, you might probably run into is that the OpenXML SDK is based on .NET. So if your web application is not using .NET, you're using Node.js or some other platform, um, then you're gonna have to find an alternative. So one option is you, there is an open XML SDK for JavaScript that you could use. Uh, another approach, if that doesn't work, is you could isolate the open XML code part that like embeds the add-in into say like an Azure function, some kind of web function that that part runs .NET, but it's separate from your web application. So you can continue to use uh, whatever platform you're using with your, with your web application. And then of course, we recommend using single sign-on uh, to simplify things for your user so they don't have to keep signing into stuff. Let's see, let me go back. 
trying to think if there's anything else I needed to show on that. Uh, oh, so let us know. I'm going to go create, I'm going to start an issue in the PNP repo. And if folks want to give us feedback on that issue, like one of the questions we have is like, you know, which of these approaches, if we've been in in scenario, like would you want to see, you know, putting OXML in an Azure function as an approach, or would you want to see one of these other approaches, right? This is kind of where we're wondering like, you know, what, what would be the simplest best way to show this as sort of an end to end instead of like right now we just have pointers like here's all the puzzle pieces and here's what the picture looks like on the front of the box and you know and now you can put it together but we kind of want to give you a finished puzzle if we can so i will create that and if uh, folks want to comment on that issue that would be great <laughs>